Hello, this is Mark and Billy with The Art of Diesel, where we are all about diesel and automotive efficiency, performance, and independence. Now, speaking of independence, who needs a prefab playset for your children, or in my case, your grandchildren? <laughs> this is all scratch built from lumber, something I spent a few days on earlier in the week. Built this thing up, it's very large, very beefy, I think stronger than what you're going to buy prefab. And um, this is gonna have uh, swings hanging from it. There's a big uh, four by six down here that, um, that has all the hardware from it. And it was all assembled here in the high bay of my workshop and it's been broken down and marked so that we can take it to my son's place when things dry out a little bit and bolt it all together. And uh, our grandson and Baby M, who is on the way, our second grandchild, we don't know if it's a boy or girl, they're not telling us, but uh, we're going to make certain that our grandchildren have uh, good play sets. And uh, it's, you know, it's the benefit of having grandparents who are good with their hands. So anyhow, with that, I want to talk about what I'm working on today. So let me just move this over here. Yes, of course. We are back to Ivana the Turbo Diesel. Now, in a previous video, I was showing interior work that I had done to the car. And one of the things that came up in that was I mentioned that I thought I had a bad cluster and it was killing my battery. Guess what? My battery's still dying. Yes, and Mr. Rooster's crowing. I don't know if you can hear that. But the bottom line is the battery's still dying and we need to take a look and figure out what's going on. So I'm going to show you how I troubleshoot electrical current draws and uh, see if we can figure out what the cause is today uh, on this edition of The Art of Diesel. Now, the first thing you need to know is that I've set the latches as though everything's closed. I put some tape on there, it's kind of like a, think of it as like a remove before flight tag. <laughs> the bottom line is this keeps me from going, oh wait, I shouldn't close that until I open the latch back up. But I've closed the latches so that the system on board, the, the car thinks that everything's closed and that way I have space to work. I also put a piece of tape down here to also help remind me I did the same thing on the driver's side door, which of course I'll need access to. Now I want to show off a couple quick tools that are useful for this job. First of all is a clamp ammeter. Now most clamp ammeters that you find are only going to be good for alternating current. Now, obviously, in a car, we're dealing with a direct current system, so you need one that's capable of doing it for AC and DC. If I turn this on, I'll put it in the 40 amp setting here, and you'll see the screen comes up there, and there's a selection button here. Right now, it might be hard to see in this lighting, but this is set to AC. I hit the button once, and it goes to DC. Once it's in DC mode, I think I gotta hit the zero button to zero that out. It gets pretty close to almost no current being shown at all. Now, what I can do with this is, first of all, I know that my charger here is charging at about 10 amps. So just for an example, let me show you what happens. Look at that. Here you can see the 10 amp current that's going into that. Of course, what I'm more interested in right now, yeah, I've gotta charge my battery, but I'm also going to look at, I could do this on the positive or the negative cable and just see what kind of current draw I've got. Now the car's been sitting for a little bit and we are pulling about 1.8 amps. Another important tool to have, of course, is just a halfway decent multimeter. <laughs> this is not anything great. This is actually a Harbor Freight. You can see it's a Centec brand and it's really not a bad multimeter. It seems to work quite well. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to set it in the millivolt range. It's not an auto ranging setup. I have to manually set the range. Now, the important thing to check with these is to go ahead and touch your leads together and make certain that it goes to zero millivolts. And the reason for that is I'm making sure that I've got good leads and that they're not, they don't have any opens in them, you know, or high resistance. And what we're going to do to check for current is we're going to take advantage of Ohm's law. I'm not gonna go into a whole lot of detail, but the bottom line is that if 
current is flowing through the circuits in the car. It's got to be passing through a fuse somewhere, right? So we're gonna look at all the fuses and because a fuse is not a superconductor, right? So because there is a small amount of resistance across a fuse, I can actually go ahead and measure the voltage drop across the fuse if current is flowing. If current is flowing, there will be a small voltage drop across the, the fuse because again, it's acting like a very low, low resistance resistor, right? So what we're going to do is we're just gonna start measuring across the posts on these fuses and find out you know, where, where the current's being drawn. All right, so I'm going to start off in the back since that's where I am at the moment and we're going to pop some things off here. You might not have noticed this with fuses, but when you take a close look at a fuse, on the back side of the fuse, there's actually two metal points that you can connect to and that will show you when you measure what the voltage drop is across that fuse. I'm going to start looking across these fuses. Okay, and what you hope to find is zero when everything's shut down like it is in this car. Zero, like that. If you see zero, you know you've got a good contact. So we just keep working our way across all these fuses. Two, three tenths of a millivolt. Let's see what that means on our sheet. Now, I will show a link on where you can find this. This was created by the guys at Power Probe. They do sell some sort of electrical tools and stuff. I don't actually own any of their stuff. But I'll point you to their website because they've got a useful PDF that will help you convert millivolts based on what type of fuse you have and what its current rating is. You can determine roughly how much current is being drawn. Again, 3 tenths of a millivolt on a 40 amp fuse. So let's start right there and figure out, let's find out what that is. Okay, I go three tenths of an amp and a 40 amp fuse. That's two tenths of an amp being drawn right here. That's 200 milliamps. I don't think that's my big problem. I'm going to make note of this circuit and try to understand what that is. I don't know if it's anything to be concerned about. I should have less than two tenths of an amp being drawn. Although, I know I've got something bigger going on because I'm pulling about 1.8. Alright, here you can see one of my markings and the other one here. I did push this latch into the closed position on the door so those things remind me from <laughs> trying to slam the door closed. Seven tenths on a 7.5. If we're at seven tenths of millivolt on a 7.5, this is very small, we're talking 73 milliamps is hardly anything. Let's keep looking. 1.2 and a 5 amp. 1.1, 1 1.2 1 1 on a 5 amp is also very small. So I'm not finding anything here that's really a significant current draw, so next we're going to go look under the hood. I should take advantage of the ability of a Mercedes to move the hood all the way up and back, so watch this trick. Makes the hood nice and vertical, makes it easier to access things. That seems to be a common trait among many Mercedes vehicles. OK, 
1.3 on fuse 64. Let's look at the others. Nothing. 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 Fuse 64. That's where I thought I had the issue before, but that doesn't seem like a whole lot. Let's look at that again. Fuse 64 has 1.3 millivolts. 1.3 millivolts, but that's only on a 7.5 amp fuse. So this is a rather small current draw, a tenth of an amp. We've had a few tenths of an amp, but we haven't had 1.8 amps accounted for. So something here doesn't add up. The bottom line is this is not exact. Fuses are not exactly calibrated for some resistance value. That is not their intent. And this is a very useful guide to give you some indication of where to look. And what it's done is it's narrowed down to these three fuses. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull each one, one at a time, and we'll find out by looking at the overall current draw back in the trunk, which one is the biggest cause. Okay, first we are gonna pull this one, number 64, and let's see what happens. So what have we got? Of course, we're looking at this upside down, but that's my current draw right there. The fact that it went down to around a tenth of an amp, you know, 0.15 amps. Oh, and it's dropping further. I'll bet given time it goes even lower. The bottom line is that removing this fuse. So it looks like that chart could be off by up to an order of magnitude. So I need to find out what else is on circuit. The circuit behind uh, fuse number 64 besides just the instrument cluster because this is where I saw the problem before. GoPro stop recording. Okay because the cluster appears to be drawing power although I've done a bench test and um, I, I replaced the cluster I've got exactly the same issue and I did a bench test on the old cluster it only pulls like half an amp when I remove um, the the switch power from it, which is still too much, but there's activity going on in there that I think is keeping the bus operating, and that's what's drawing a lot of power. What I've done for now is back behind here, I put in a relay so that when power is removed from the system, all the power to this cluster is removed. And the result of that is keeping things nice and quiet. I don't get the power drain, but here's the problem. When I turn it on, Watch what's gonna happen because we have a clock, right? So watch what happens, of course. Every time I start it up, everything else is gonna work fine, but the clock is gonna go round and round and round back to noon. Ah, it's a lot of clock cycles, but here we go. It's gonna go to noon and then it's gonna stop. And the bottom line is that's what's gonna happen every time I restart the car for now. It's a workaround, so I don't have to put the car in a charger every time I shut it down and don't drive it on a daily basis. However, it's not a real long-term solution, and what I need to do is, I've got two of these clusters now. I need to find somebody who can run through the clusters and find out what's really wrong with them. Uh, both clusters I have have exactly the same part number. It's an early part number. It's probably something they fix later on, but I have to believe that it's a common problem in these clusters. And again, it's keeping the bus awake. If I remove the power from the cluster, the problem goes away. It's kind of a sucky solution, but for now it works and I don't have dead power all the time.